uh, Riviera PR this morning. Hi, Katie. Hey, yeah. Um, and Katie and I were having a chat the other day and we decided that actually we needed to do a live Q&A all about social media. But we thought we'd do it with a little bit of a twist. We thought we'd do it about the mindset surrounding social media. So we're going to be covering today all sorts of topics, um, including like why, why do social media? Why would you bother? Like other than to see what your friends are up to, why, why would you do more than that? We're going to be talking about some myths because there's some great myths out there, aren't there, about what you should and shouldn't be doing. We're talking about things like the haters, jealousy, how you deal with that kind of side of it, downsides of putting yourself out, how to deal with it. We're going to be talking about why riders actually and businesses and coaches and all sorts of why you need to be using social media, but need to be thinking about it slightly differently than just, you know, posting what you ate for dinner that night kind of thing. I think we'll be on those days now, aren't we? Um, and yes, yeah, so do ask your questions, please do um i am going to be keeping an eye on those in the lounge this morning and um katie will be asking away so katie tell us give us for those that don't know you haven't met you don't know what riviera is just give us a really quick overview of what riviera pr is all about first <laughs> everything and anything um no not really um so it was fundamentally set up to help riders with um sponsorship management um so helping them go and find sponsors how they do that um, it's sort of expanded already in the in the last six months, so helping also riders and businesses both alike with um, social media and PR. PR is quite a big term, <laughs> but uh, it's included bits and pieces in the press, so getting press release, press coverage, um, perhaps guest features uh, online or in, in print, um, and sort of finding opportunities to expand and get more knowledge around those um and that's that's been for riders and businesses um both um and i also do a little bit of coaching so sort of do, do it for you service to help riders so if they don't have time um but i also help other riders who do want to do it themselves um how they can go about using social media more effectively and how they can um approach a brand or a company in the right way cool okay great so let's talk a little bit about that then so why would riders or businesses why would people be using social because if we think about it when it first started up facebook back in it was about well i joined i think in 2006 something like that Crazy. yeah i was at uni that's it yeah last year of uni we all went what's this book face thing oh we'll sign up to that might keep in yeah. touch um and um you know then it really was pe people posting pictures of their dinner and stuff like that and just you know it was very much like that but it's massively evolved over the years hasn't it so Tell us a little bit about why why we need to be using it in a very different way now. I mean, you might still post pictures of your food, I suppose, if you want to. Definitely post pictures of your pony, but yeah. why, why do we need to be thinking about it differently now? Um, well, social media is, for one, free, and two, gives you access to more people than you can possibly imagine. So I think something like 80 billion people are online every day. Um, and Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all of that open you up um to that market um and it's a really simple way effective way of getting your stuff in front of your ideal client um and the thing is if as bad as it sounds if you're not doing it your competitors will be doing it um it's the power of it is so great now that you will be missing out if you're you're not there um on top of it really um so what is go on carry Oh, go on, go, no, go. I was going to say, what is there and on top of it? What Doing sort of consistently, that doesn't mean every single day. That means a timetable that works for you and your customers. Um, posting good content that's got good value. Um, it's not all about sales. It is all about um, talking about the value, giving advice, um, and posting engaging information that people want to be involved with. If you can create... Um, a community that's even better um i was looking at it yesterday starbucks did this red cup campaign a little while ago and it was genius because it was user generated content so they were saying i'll tag us in your pictures um to be featured and potentially win a prize and people just went mad and so they're getting free content but people are feeling like they've made it because starbucks are posting them on their socials um and it becomes like a little family then um and that's a great way to again like get your company or your own even as riders discussing it with the ride yesterday and how we could do that for her, um, you know, create that little sense of community um, and get those raving fans, which is really the key. 
Okay, so we want raving fans, so we want people around us supporting us, and we want to be out there showing people what we're doing. So that I mean, so that ultimately, I was always told it was so that they know, like, and trust us, isn't it? Yep. So they get to know us, they get to like us, they get to trust us, and then they're going to be more interested in what we've got to say, and trust it. So that then, when you are talking about your product or your service, they're ready then to buy it and ready to engage in it some way. So, what would you say are some of the common myths around, you know, social media and the things that people come up with that you have to come against? What are the things that people say to you? Um, I get a lot of, does it really make that much difference? Uh, actually, I, I spoke to a couple of brands at B2L in the year and they were companies and they were like, oh, you know, do we really need to? Or I'm really sure we get plenty of sales. And I'm sure you will. Um, I think you just get a few more by the addition of social media. Um they say it takes seven points of contact for someone to know, like, and trust you. Apparently now in the world of social media, it's up to as much as 70. Um, so if you're able to get regular posts out there and seen more often, you're going to hit that quite a bit sooner. Um, and yeah, I think also a lot of people feel a real pressure to put the perfect life on social media. Um, especially sort of with the question world and the professionals, they're like, oh, we must, must make everything look clean and, you know, we'll talk about our results, but actually people I've found really like an engaging story and something they can get on board with themselves because at the end of the day, like, unless you're very, very lucky, nothing's ever completely perfect with a horse. Um, and having those highs and lows, I think, is important. You don't need to put every single detail and a niche in all of the lows because then it sort of swings it the other way. Um, but actually, I think, you know, the behind the scenes is really um engaging i was actually having a chat to i don't know if you've seen the f1 series um on netflix at the moment it's all the behind the scenes of formula one um sort of took, took me back to my day i was um, gonna say that used to be where you were isn't yeah. it oh were you in it yeah no it's like the last three years so a bit oh, too just oh. um but they were saying how it'd be great for that for the question world like if there was a behind the scenes series with like badminton or the olympics you actually knew what was really going on it'd be really interesting um, I think there's a lot of people that, you know, would love to know how these people have got to the top and succeeded and done as much as they've done, how much hard work it is um, and that side. So I think that brings, if you can. And I think, you know, everyone loves the underdog, don't they? Everyone loves to know that actually they weren't giving it all on a plate and they can do it because what that actually does from a mindset perspective is... Um, when something seems out of reach, it switches people off. So they think, oh, you know... Um, I'm not actually that bothered about it. Um, you know, they've got it all. I'm never going to get that because I don't have all this, whatever it is I need to get there. But actually, when people hear that, you know, you bought your horse for a pound or that you rescued it or that um, this is your eighth horse that you've had to go through to get the right partnership or that, you know, um, you went through all sorts of hell and back or, you know, you haven't just been given it on a plate, you know, that kind of side of things. People really like that because they think, oh, well, if you could do it, there's a chance I could too. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't matter what level you're at, does it? You know, I think the reason people love Charlotte Dujardin's story so much is that, you know, she started off in showing. She got she she worked hard, but she got given a break. You know, she yeah. she she got to go and work with Carl and she put everything into it to get to where she got yeah. to. And people kind of go, oh, actually, do you know what? Like no one just put her on a Grand Prix horse and said off you go. You know, yeah. and I think that's the thing that's the engaging thing isn't it it's it's yeah. linking with what's relevant to someone so they go oh me too me too i that's a bit like me maybe i could maybe i could do that or learn from you or great phrase i love the other day someone said to me as they said i've gotten to the top of the tower that i want to get to and um you know i by no means took a lift to get up here but there's now a lift up here like i know the far street to get here and yeah. I will come down in that lift to meet you at the bottom of the stairs. But by hook or crook, you're not getting in the lift with me. You've got to do the stairs. You know, I will show you which stairs to miss out on and how not to fall over on the way up. But you're not getting in my lift because it was the one that I made. And it yeah. was really interesting. It was like, oh, that's a really good analogy. I like that. Yeah. So tell us about, you know, when you're working with riders and things and you're doing their social and you're getting them out there more. Tell us tell us the kind of things that you're doing and you're helping them with and, and all of that sort of side of it. Um, so with the, the coaching, actually, a lot of it, the riders sort of go, well, I'm not an international Grand Prix rider yet. Can I, you know, who's going to want to work with me? Um, and actually, there's an amazing amount that every rider has to offer and everyone's different. So there will be brands that align completely with you that possibly won't align with that international Grand Prix rider. 
Um, so we sit and work out their own personal brand, what um, it is to them, what their values are. And then we go on and work out actually how many different ways that they can help a company. Um, because it's a two-way street sponsorship and social media is not a part of that journey. Um, but it's really, you know, it almost becomes a point of like, oh, actually, you've got 20, almost 30 ways that you can help market a company. Don't you owe that to them to help them out? Because you can help them and help that business grow. Um, and so we take that and then we step into the social media aspect and just sort of give them a real quick um, overhaul of how they can use that better. So how they can grow their pages more, um, how we look at shareability and viral content, um, but also managing stories on Instagram versus what you put in your grid and the sort of things you put on Facebook to target. You know, if you're a, a rider and coach, you need to be finding your your ideal clients and how and how you go and do with that. So that's kind of what the bits I work on um, with the social media pages that I manage on behalf of riders. We sort of look at a bit of behind the scenes, training tips and advice. Um, content that's relatable also definitely sort of involving sponsors as much as possible um, and then competition results or where they're out training and teaching so people can find them um, I think that's sort of like the, the main aspects that we put on those on those pages but in general I think the social media is almost better when it comes from the riders themselves so I try and give them the tools to do it better if I can Okay, so let's say I come to you and I'm not an International Grand Prix rider. In fact, I have no real desires to be an International Grand Prix if we're talking about dressage or what have you. But I would really quite like some people on my team. I'd like some sponsors on board. I'd like some free product. Yeah. I'd like some free service. You know, I just want some stuff. Yeah. What would you say? Okay, so it's mainly about working out what you can offer them. So free stuff's great, but actually is it the right stuff? you've got to pair with the right company, the right brand. There's no point going to some company you don't know and getting free stuff if you don't like it because you'll never write a really, truly honest report. And the thing is, brands are looking for people that are going to really honestly talk and rave about what they do, what they offer, their products, because it, it sells more. Fundamentally, sponsorship is a marketing tool. Um, I was just about to say something that's gone completely out of my head that was really useful. <laughs> Right, um, it'll come back. I was um, going to say to you, if I had that mindset, though, of I just want some free stuff, like, you know, I, it would just be quite cool to have some free bits. What would you say to someone that had that kind of mindset around it? And um, then your thing will come back to you as you're talking about it, I guarantee. <laughs> um, I think it'd be chatting about why specifically free and then what they're going to do for that in return. Um, it is a relationship. It's always a relationship. And, you know, whether it's friends or partners, you can't have it all just being take, take, take. It just doesn't work. It'll always break down um, and neither of you will come out of it smiling. So it'll be about reworking that and actually saying, you know, what can you offer them? What can we do together? How can we find that right company that's, that suits you and what you need? Because there's no point, you know, me giving you a free shovel if your horse is on DIY, is there? But you've got free stuff. So I guess it's a little bit about setting those goals that are really specific and uh, do do a bit of that as well um that helps make it very tailored and more achievable okay so i know one of the common questions that you get a lot is why do i want to pay someone because you know your packages funnily enough aren't free like no. you know you it's a business um why do i want to pay you to help me sort my social media out that doesn't make any sense to me because actually you know um a few free products here and there I could probably manage to get myself like so why does someone need support with this stuff what because we keep talking about the mindset of social media here and and yeah. it's useful to know what the the wrong the sort of the less than helpful there's never a wrong mindset there's a less than helpful mindset which is i want some free stuff yeah. what would be a more helpful mindset around thinking about this for for riders for influencers for anyone how can i help them um i think that's a better better way to look at it it's it is always about talking about the other company and how can I use the platforms that I have to expose that brand more. Um, it takes a lot of effort to manage a social media channel and do it well. Um, and there are, it, you know, perhaps like with the, the, the tower example that you used, I can help you go up those steps a little bit faster than if you are trying to work it all out yourself. Um, but it's also about um you know finding those 
those right platforms for you to grow on because if you're not necessarily always teaching 700 people a month and you're not out on the road competing at big shows and you're not exposed to a massive audience um, then having the social media means you can get to more people and advertise to more people in that way instead um, I've been reading a really interesting book that I need to finish um, called One Million Followers and they start with the first chapter on it's an actress and they said to her you know you're a really great actress you should make it in Hollywood but you've got no social media and she's like how on earth is that relevant to me being a good actor and they're like well the girl next to you is not you know she's only a little bit less good than you but she's got millions of followers so she'll be able to promote our films and what behind the scenes and what's going on considerably more so if you are up against someone who has all the social media platforms then you know you're going to be missing out on tens of thousands of people that you can market that brand to and um i've had some interesting chats with companies lately actually and they've said oh you know we want to support the top riders but they haven't grasped the social media side for us and we need that to help promote our businesses um and a lot of them will now sell off social media rather than on online or have a shop um so they need that support and that's kind of why i try and help riders tidy that aspect of their business up so tell us a little bit more about that then so there's businesses out there that are saying do you know i'd rather take someone at a lower level or more of a grassroots because they've got twenty thousand followers than necessarily pitch it someone at the top level and quite frankly we all know nowadays don't we that the top level riders get tons of sponsorship they may not even necessarily be using those products might they they you know they wear the brand on their jacket or their cap when they're doing their their pr or whatever because they have to that's in the contract but they go home and they probably don't use the products a lot of the time um Tell us a little bit then about the kind of that idea then of why a business might want to pick you. It's again, it's that mindset of why should I do it yeah. um, over a top top rider then? I think there's there is that common misconception as well that so you know people see the top riders and go oh they're paid to use that brand so they probably don't really um, you know they probably don't really use it. I don't, I don't think that's true, but that is what some people feel. Um, you know that mindset piece like we've we've said people think that that exists um whereas the more grassroots or even i don't even say grass you know anything from grassroots up really uh, are deemed to be more relatable um and people buy from people that are like them so if you have a relatable story on your social media and you can be top level and have a very relatable story um then people are, will be attracted to those products and that's why companies will have a broad range of riders on their spectrum and they will have influencers who have tens of thousands of followers but actually if you've got a couple of thousand followers you know you don't have to be massive if you've got a really really engaged following where people are really interested in your journey and what you're using and how you're using it that's also equally as powerful as being a top level rider too so everyone has like i said before we're all slightly different and got slightly different skills and strengths and and things to offer so it's about finding that Okay, so how would you go about finding out your skills and your strengths then? You know, so there's me riding at Novice BD, doing a bit showing here and there. Would really like, like there's some products I love. I'd really love to be able to support that company to help them even more because that's the mindset you need, isn't it? Yeah. Not how do I get it for free, yeah. but how do I support that company to help grow them? And as a bonus, they might give me something or some discount or some free product or something that's going to help us both out. But it's got to be win-win, hasn't it? Yeah. So, um you know what what do i need to be thinking about to understand what you've just what you've just said there um so when we go through this coaching we do a lot of working out how many different ways you can expose a brand and you will sit down and come up with a list so i don't want to go into it in detail but um <laughs> basically you need to sit and be really focused on how many different ways you are out there and exposing yourself to the world so is that yard visits is that social media is it teaching is it competitions sit and have a real good think about all those different ways that you you know if you were a walking billboard who's going to see it and that's the way to look at it oh i love that analogy a walking billboard because yeah. i think traditionally people used to see um sponsorship as well as you get a saddle pad and a gilet didn't you yeah. and um and you know i used to get people say to me because i run an ambassador scheme and they have to apply to it every year yeah. and i would get i would say to people i don't i actually in some ways, yes, I'm interested in your social media following, but I'm also interested in those of you that are out there talking to people because in what I do, that's really important. Yeah. But um, it, this isn't a saddle pad and a jilly kind of thing. You know, you need to be part of the team. It very much is part, 
a team as well, isn't it? Our, our ambassador team. In fact, I saw this morning one of the girls just checked in with everyone. I went, hey, how are you all doing? You know, I was like, oh, that's nice. I meant to do that this morning. You got there first. <laughs> you know, so it's really lovely having that team, isn't it? But yeah. what they're doing for the brand is they genuinely are a part of it. They are a team. Yeah. Um, and they don't have saddle pads and gilets because actually – they're not, especially at the moment, they're not out showing that off. And yeah. I don't know how much exposure does that kind of thing even get? That's kind of the old traditional way of looking at it, isn't it? So it's a mix from what I hear you say. Yeah, I think it's definitely a mix. You know, some people do want a saddle pad and a gilet and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. If that's what you you want. I remember being a kid and I desperately wanted like my name on my saddle cloth. And then it's like, oh, I love a company. And that was it. Dead chuck with a saddle cloth with a brand on it. And for some people, you know, that's fine. And you'll get a great partnership with a brand if it works for both of you. Um but still, you know, it is a great way still, you know, if you're getting that picture of your rider in horse and hound or in a magazine and they've got your logo on the side, then it's not a bad, bad little spot of advertising that you've got for free. So it's, it is varied. And I think, you know, if you could be, if you're wearing branded stuff when you head to someone to teach them, they might then ask what it is or, and it just sparks that conversation. Um, and that's how things start to flow is when they see something and wonder what it is, um, as well as you just talking about it. So I think it's it, it, it's a good little addition to what you're doing. Cool. OK, so what I'm hearing so far then is, is that the mindset around this has got to be how is this a win win for both of us? How can I help companies that I probably already love or yeah. that I maybe don't know exist yet, but would be a great fit? What is it that I'm doing that isn't necessarily the traditional thing you might think about doing on social media? What are all the different ways that people see me or see me out and about? And, you know, particularly social media, but also outside of that is just as important, especially in the horse world, isn't it? I mean, at the moment, social media is obviously massively important because of lockdown. Yeah. That's the way it went crazy, didn't it? Um, because it was the, our, our only way of communicating a lot yeah. of it. And so a lot of brands had to really ramp up their social media. Um, so, but what I'm... What I'm hearing from you very much is it's a real mix, isn't it? It's a real mix, yeah. um, you know, and it's about what's right for you. It's about knowing you, what you're about. Tell yeah. us just um, quickly, without giving too much away, because I know it's on your coaching package, but what is a personal brand then? What's that? Because when, often when we think of brand, we think of a logo or something for a company, yeah. don't we? That's, that's normally the first thought. Or we might think about colours or something like that. But what yeah. is a brand then? How do you have a personal brand as a rider or an influencer? So it is almost, it's coming up almost with your own little, we kind of generally come up with like a, a phrase that really means something to you and sums up what you do and how you do it. Um, and it can be really simple. Um, my brand on my Decipher and Dressage page was Amateur Dressage Rider. And that for me meant meant everything. You know, it's really simple, but that's what it was. Um, I wanted to talk about my riding, balancing my work. Um, I had quite an interesting job at points and it was like, how do I balance it? What products make my life easier? Because I'm an amateur dressage rider, what's related to dressage? What's related to the amateur aspect? And it brings everything back into that. So, you know, when you're sat and going, I don't know what to post about, what makes a difference to you, you know, and, and your day and your, and your riding? So me, be like, okay, well, I'm not sure what to post about. Perhaps I could talk about today, like how I've managed to organise my diary for competing because that takes extra bit of time around my work or what product made a real big difference what makes my life easier because I've got to be quick and and rush around because I've got to get everything in before work and that kind of thing and it's coming up with perhaps a handful of words it might be a sentence it might be a couple of words and everyone's is different that really ties everything into one place so then you'll start and go oh no that brand doesn't fit this or my values are completely out of sync with how I post you know I can't post in that way on my social because that doesn't feel right and it doesn't align with me and myself and my horses um so it's really just that kind of middle point that you can always come back to when you're a little bit stuck and and not doing a very good job of explaining it. <laughs> yeah, and it makes total sense because I was just thinking about that then. I was thinking, what's mine? And I thought, well, actually, mine's dream it, do it, love it. And that's exactly what it is. It's like, yeah. dream it, great. Now do it, but make sure you're loving it as well. Like, don't just do it because you dreamt it or do it and not love it or don't do it because you're only dreaming it. You know, yeah. and for me, that, that was like, that's my catchphrase that's my that's my thing and yeah. and I love it um and that says everything about what it's about and people see that and go oh yeah I get that I yeah. get what that's about then yeah cool okay so 
we talked about why you why it's a good thing to be doing how you need to know what you're about um how you need to think about what's in it for others others and to get that great partnership you need to think about all the different ways you can do things all the interesting stuff we need to think about showing behind the scenes as well we'll get a bit more onto that in a minute um you know what about this idea then of the 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 downsides and you know social media really gets a big bashing sometimes for the bad influence it has it makes in the press you know people being bullied all this terrible stuff I mean you know you put yourself out there you've put yourself out there so tell us a bit about your take on the kind of the mindset you need to have around social media because I know you've been on one heck of a journey around this over the years haven't you yourself before you even set up your own company around it tell us a little bit about the sort of the downsides the pitfalls the things people have got to be aware of and open-eyed to before they do really start to put themselves out there more publicly um I think it's about determining why you're doing it um and I think that why needs to come from a place that is true to you and like your brand um I set my page up as a diary um because I wanted to sort of I was fed up of everyone seeing, I think my friends are fed up of me continuously posting about my horse and I just wanted to take it separately. Um, people now set up purely to, because they need to for their business, but try if you can think about what you'd actually get out of, out of having it rather than just having it as perhaps a side, you know, I know my business needs this, so I'm going to have to do it. What can it bring to you? What actual help can it can it have for you you know will it be that photographic memory you know you can look back over the years and really remember what you're doing or will it be a means to capture all the team that you work with and you can talk about them a lot um and I think with that way then it becomes your own little personal journey you know if people don't like it then like there will always be trolls there will always be someone who's got something negative to say um I had it for the first time I've been really lucky with my own personal page and it's always been positive and someone the other week posted, oh, it's all right for you because you can ride in the middle of the day, not like us that got a ride around work. And I was like, oh, I've spent the last 10 years like massively juggling this. And I've, and I've been very fortunate that I've reworked my life so I can. And I was like, it's funny now because now I'm getting knocked for doing what I... <laughs> and I just kind of had to sit and laugh a little bit and just reply and say, you know, thank, you know, thanks very much. Um, it, you know I've, I've worked hard to get here to, so I can do this um the video is actually taken at nine o'clock in the morning I think on a Sunday I've been up at six to get to where I needed to ride at so it wasn't the middle of a day that I just crawled out of bed for um and it is you know people can just judge off of one single image what they want to take and people will um but I think the good will always outweigh the bad for me there's always been so many positive people positive comments and what I've seen from other people as well as people get on that journey and want to support you and see you do well um so if you do get a troll i think you can celebrate that you've made it and you're doing something i always say to people when they get one open a glass of bubbly and celebrate it because somebody's annoyed that you're doing well so take it like it's a good opportunity and you just politely have a conversation with them as well like don't be rude don't be crude back but if you just have that conversation with them like oh thank you very much for your comments um you know something polite back and then they respond again, like you end up increasing your engagement on your post. So they've helped you out because they've made your post even bigger. Um, so, yeah, I don't if you are if you do get the odd one and I always think it will be a handful, um, then just yeah, celebrate it and take it as that you've, you've done something that's upset someone else. So you're clearly doing it right. Yeah, I have to say that that was taught to me many years ago. and It was the most useful thing I've ever had. And I know I share it with all my ambassadors, which is yeah. that good someone someone thinks you've done something that they're jealous of so in order for someone to be jealous of you and they actually have to take the time to go on your page and write this stuff they must be super jealous like they've actually you know that they're they're using their energy to do this and the only reason people will ever try and knock you down or make you feel bad about what you're doing or tell you you shouldn't be doing it is because they are not yeah. And why are they not? Well, they've obviously got issues of their own. They've got beliefs of their own that hold in the back. You know, and it's really funny, isn't it, that there you are for years saying this is how I juggle a really super full time career around trying to, you know, do the very best with my horse and things and realise that actually you didn't want to do that anymore. Yeah. And you managed to create a business. You know, you, you work really hard to get that business up and running in order to have the flexibility you wanted to be around your horse. And then someone comes around and turns you off. You're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't really, aren't you? So I always say to people, look, 
If you're going to upset people, you might as well be happy doing what you want to and upsetting them than being miserable and upsetting them anyway, because it doesn't matter. It, you know, does not matter, does it? They're going to, they're not going to like you regardless. And even if, even if people are too negative on social media, even if people are too real. So tell us a little bit about, you know, being real and still getting that stuff. This, this whole idea of warts and all and things like that and being honest. I think, um, I mean, that's where, like, you know, perhaps if your horse gets an injury, A, you always make sure that the people around you know first before you post it on social media. Like, that's pretty key. Your sponsors shouldn't be finding out off Facebook that your horse is out of work. But you don't have to put how exactly it disappeared, you know, how it's hurt itself. You can just say, you know, this is how, you know, real gutted, this is what's happened. We're out for the season now. And then you park it. Because I think when you leave things open people come up with their own stories around it whereas if you can you can put the truth out there first and be able to quash it and and people go oh god you know that's um that's really tough for them um and then you can you know if your horse can return to work you've got a whole new story about how you've rehabbed your your horse back into full fitness and imagine like having the people behind you backing you with that like that'd be really exciting um i think the opposite side that i've seen with some pages is they just continuously talk about all the negative and that's also a bit off-putting because you're like you know you've got so much great going on in your life like great horses like come on be happy about all of that side too so it is a balance um i don't think it should be like a fairies and champagnes and yay life's wonderful all the time or uh, oh my god my life's the worst thing it's just about having that that rule and you can professionally spin all of that yeah and um i think like you were saying as well Actually, when we think about what social media is, yeah. okay, so we can think of it from the point of view of you're a rider or an influencer and you want to work with great brands. And you can think yeah. of it from the point of view of you're a business, you're a great brand, you want to work with these people. But then most of the people on social media are on it for entertainment. Yeah. Education, entertainment. That's yeah. what they want, those three things, education and entertainment. And you are not going to entertain someone if you're just constantly going on about the negative because people are going to go, oh. I don't I mean I've never quite got why people like EastEnders so much to be honest with you it's just <laughs> so for me it was always like oh god it's so depressing but it's because they'd be major depressing and then do this massive lift with this storyline of great amazingness or something they yeah. bring you back out of it again but then they put you back in it again and it's not saying engineer it like EastEnders please no but you know why do we love awful stuff like Love Island Oh yeah, you know, um, or it, any kind of social, any any of that stuff. So it's because it's got the highs and the lows, hasn't it? You know, you can't always have the highs, can't always have the lows. We've got to take them on a journey. We've got, as someone once said to me, you've got you've got to breathe with your audience. So yeah. you've got to bring it up and then it down again, and bring it up and then it again. So, you know, like you said, it's about balance, isn't it? It's about yeah. think about what's going to entertain and educate. And in your professional opinion, then what kind of stuff is the most entertaining or educational that really engages people? I honestly think you're your own ideal viewer with your page. So a lot of it is if you've seen other pages that you like the way they do it, do it that way. Um, but your own little spin on it. If you can't find it, be that be that page, do it yourself, do it your own way. Um, I think it's also um you know it's a very personal thing you don't want to be continuously posting in a way that you're not comfortable with because you feel that's the right thing to do so and as well like it will come across and it it won't be interesting so just it's, it's about doing what's comfortable for you fundamentally and just really thinking you know when you're about to hit the post button on that is that the right thing to be saying just sanity check it before you send it but otherwise you know do what makes you happy cool okay and it's interesting because, you know, things we've heard of in the past are PR stunts, yeah. clickbait, yeah. that kind of thing. So tell us a little bit about what that stuff kind of is and why people do it and why maybe it's not the best idea really can be. Um, not seen so much of it in the equestrian world, but I guess it's, it's kind of like putting out a picture that you think is going to be really exciting and then you click on it and you realise it's not what you thought it was going to be fundamentally we've all seen those pictures oh, or some I... kind of headline or something isn't it yeah. there's something terrible and you click on it and it's not really news at all it's just no. they've, they've done this fabulous headline yeah um and you know it does work it gets people onto your site and works so i guess for engagement and whatnot um but i think it's you know like you said social media was set up to be talking about us and what we're doing and what we're up to and, and it boils back to that it's about being sociable and um 
there is a real feeling of that you have to put the right thing out there all the time and be skinny and you know always looking pretty and your horse always has to have matchy and and that's not what the world's like so um no i think again just i'll just say stay true to what you want to do with it i think that's so true as well isn't it like i know i've had lots of discussions with people and they go oh you know i really want to get more photos up or i really want to um you know um be on camera more and anything like that but you know i haven't done my makeup i don't look good i mean look my hair my hair's still not dry this morning still not dry um on camera um, and you see me walking the dog in the morning. Sometimes I'm like, oh, just got enough. Um, but there's that fine line, isn't there, between being real because actually they're interested in what you've got to say, and and not so much what you look like, unless you're setting yourself up as a high end luxury brand, in which case, yeah, image is everything, isn't it? Yeah. Well, if if you being news, were you getting up every day and putting makeup on and doing your hair, then that's you and that's real. Like you do you. Um, but no, you don't have to. If you as a person isn't somebody who wakes up and looks glamorous every single day, then that's also fine. Like definitely not. A <laughs> um, if I started doing that before, I'd be like, gosh, she's suddenly got some time on her hands. What's she not doing then? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's about what you feel comfortable. And if, if putting makeup on makes you feel more comfortable to get in front of camera to start with, or using a filter, then then do that. It is about, you know, if you really want to get your message across using video, but you're just a bit unsure because you don't you know, don't have the right haircut that day or something. Um, find a means to, to work around it. And, you know, perhaps you talk over the camera and, look, you know, you'll discuss your horse and do it that way. Um, but just get out there and start doing it. It's really the... I really like that. And I think that comes back to the concept I always talk about if we're talking about social media mindset here, of your comfort zone. Yeah. You know, if your comfort zone isn't videos, if your comfort zone isn't being without makeup, if your comfort zone isn't just chatting off the cuff, then what is the little bit of a stretch from your comfort zone because that will grow in time I mean I didn't start doing lives every morning walking the dog without makeup on or my hair done good god no you know yeah. they were a, a set time with a sort of a real I thought about what it was I was going to say what the topic was going to be you know much more sort of professional in that respect and then I realized that actually my brand is softer and much more personable and you know yeah it's a very serious topic mindset and we can cover some serious stuff sometimes but actually also it's like real it's people yeah. and yeah. so I wanted to get a bit of the realness across so I decided that for me personally lives off the cuff walking my puppy as well because people yeah. love is it dogs and coffee is that the two things that get you a lot of engagement was it yeah you told me this there one. was a yeah dogs and cats and coffee um why coffee you, I've never you, got this one I think it's good to come up with your own little brand motifs. I did a copywriting masterclass the other week. And there, there'll be things that people always associate with you and your brand. And then you can use the emojis to then match your sort of motif to your business. So if you as your business is, I mean, the dog, so you can use the dog emoji or not. Um, you normally have like three. So, you know, some people I know, you know, drink a lot of Prosecco. So that's one of them. And they can use that little emoji. Yeah. So, Jenny, you could use a Prosecco dog and a pony. It'd probably be your three. Um, you know. Or... That's a happy life. Yeah. That's perfect. Prosecco's, ponies and puppies. There yeah. we are. That's me. <laughs> um, so what do you do with those emojis then once you've got them? Once you discover what it is that you're about? You can use them in your social media posts. So as like little break points and emojis do really well to sort of bring a bit of personality into a post um and yeah like if you're using your bullet points or something like that but they become it, it's asking people what they associate with you really if you're not sure of your own one like if they came up to people i ask people they'd probably say unicorns ponies and proseccos as well like, i love a lot of Prosecco. um you know if you're not sure then ask some people but then you can use them and just theme them through it's very very subtle um, but it's quite a nice little tweak to your, your socials. So when they see somebody else use that emoji, they think of you. So, so there's actually a technique, well, not a technique, there's actually a mindset thing to that. It's called anchoring, which is yeah. the linking of two things together. Now, normally we talk about emotional anchoring, but if they've, so if they've watched a post that they've become emotionally engaged with you, and emotionally engaged doesn't have to be sat there crying. It could no. be, it could be yeah. sharing something like that, but it can also be sharing the highs, because yeah. this is why um people like entertaining and engaging content isn't it is because yeah. they are sharing the emotion with you yeah and and so you know in order for them to share your highs they have to know about your lows and vice versa don't they so that's why the whole picture is so important and this is why we love as a nation reality tv yeah 
Um, and I suppose in a way, you know, social media is edited reality TV, really, isn't it? I mean, actually, reality TV is heavily edited. That's the whole point. That's yeah. why it looks the way it does, isn't it? Because yeah. it's really quite dull, actually. They just they're very good at making it seem interesting. Yeah. Somehow. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I, The Apprentice is a classic example, isn't it? Half the conversations they actually have aren't actually what's going on. It's just been edited really carefully. Yeah to make it look that way. Like someone did not make that really stupid decision. They yeah. just, it, that's boring if they showed what really went on. They've got to show them having an argument about something because someone did something really stupid. We all sit there going, eh, eh, you are too stupid, but we watch it. Yeah. yeah so if, if, the, if the stupid emoji was at that point there on the same screen as us watching the person having the argument and we wanted to, for whatever, remember for being stupid or whatever, that links them together. So I can totally see how from a brain perspective that works so that's really subtle and clever isn't it and it's subtle clever things like that that we need people like you to help us with so what kind of stuff are you doing at the moment to help kind of teach people about this all the, all the um, clever bits oh uh well i do two courses so i've got the sponsorship course um it's a sort of a six week one-to-one -one program where we do go through we we touch on social media um because it is quite an important part of that um, but I also do a social media course as well. I haven't really spoken about it. Um, it is there available. I guess I've just sat it on the back burner um, where we can go through in depth, you know, more goal setting on your social medias, how to write good copy, proper hashtag strategy, because there's quite a lot around that. Um, again, how to get much more growth and engagement across your platforms. Um, yeah, perhaps potentially looking a bit about adverts, although I don't think it's so relevant to riders um but it is relevant to business so businesses um yeah anything and everything that people sort of come up with and face against social media so. cool okay well i think that's kind of is there anything you think you want to cover that we haven't because we kind of covered loads of stuff today haven't we? yeah i think um no there's that <laughs> i thought you were going to come up with an absolute gem then i did as well really, that was like yeah no yeah, but that a proper brain fart then. Uh, oh, you no. see, this is engaging content, isn't it? Because we're all yeah. willing you now to come <laughs> up with that. We know it's there, Katie. It's 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 going to come out in a minute. It's there. <laughs> I think just um, it, I think it's that age too, You know, if you don't don't do it, think about if if you're scared of doing it because you might get one troll or one bad comment. Like, what actually are you going to miss out on? Um, there's so many more things that you can gain out of it than just one negative comment. Um, and I think you, it is that cheesy phrase, you only ever regret the things you don't do. Um, so, you know, give it a go. If you don't like it, then delete it. That's the bonus of social media. If it doesn't work for you, you just stop posting. Simple. Um, but I think there's a lot to be gained and benefited out of it. Um, yeah, just give it a go. I have to say that I wouldn't be where I was without having used social media over the years. I certainly wouldn't have the team around me that I've got. They're incredible because, you know, the ambassador scheme that I run is purely advertised on social media. There's a web page so they can go yeah. apply, but it's advertised on social media. It's talked about on social media. It's shared. You know, they use social media. If ever there was anyone that said anything, I don't really get negative comments. They tend to be more... Um, dms that i get if someone's going to say something negative they don't tend to put it on the page so much they tend to message me and tell me what they think well, that's fine thanks very much for taking the time that's that's nice of you i'm yeah. going to find something else to do now because you know yeah. like really um but they do they rally around you and that's the best bit isn't it when you've got a, a group of people that are your fans yeah. they vehemently believe in what you do and they will be your battle they will fight your battles won't they they will go around you so if you think about it you might get some people that don't like what you've got to say but you're more likely to get a lot more people that do and yeah. they will fight your battles for you so you know my guys if ever anyone was to put anything and i had it once in the past they rallied around like you wouldn't believe and it was, it's lovely it's nice isn't it so you know and the brands will do the same thing i know a lot of companies that if someone's had a bad day or a bad time or the brand's come around them and say hey look that's okay you know we're not expecting you to always post that you've won or yeah. you know anything like that. and it's nice if you do but actually like we want you to do well because I know it's probably just worth covering that actually quickly before we finish is this concept of being worried about how you do because of how your sponsors or your brands might yeah. think about it I mean what are your thoughts on that 
I think it's, it's just always about being honest. Um, I know I had it last year because I qualified for the winters um, and River got a massive bout of lymphangitis just before. Um, and I was really fortunate. I just signed up with a feed company and it was like a dream come true, this support for me. Um, and I'd based it around me having these big goals for the season and I'd just relocated. And we only just made regionals because River had jumped, tried to jump out of the arena and landed on the gate. Um, and so to get that golden ticket was really special and then to not go was was kind of heartbreaking um and funny as long as you're honest and upfront that's the main thing and I, I went and told them and you and, and they was like you know these things happen it's horses if you can just still talk about it and talk about how you've helped us then that that's not a problem because a lot of brands get it especially equestrian ones like they completely understand that stuff goes wrong and and if they don't then perhaps you might want to reconsider the partnership um but i think fundamentally nearly everyone will you become a team and a family and it, and that that goes away pretty quick because as soon as you have that conversation it, it's all good i think that's really key isn't it so it's you know when you do have great brands that are like that and they genuinely want you to do well and yeah. they want to support you as a person because that's what it's really about isn't it yeah then they will rally with you through the the difficult bits or the down times and if you get and i've had this you know i've had ambassadors or well, actually i haven't had ambassadors because i was their supporter but i've i've had sort of brands that have supported me or something over the years and they one one actually turned around to me once and they said you're 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 promoting your business more than me so i don't think this is working and i went how do you think I pay for the fuel to get to you to come have lessons and things? You know, like, come on, I've, I've got to have a horse here. I've got to pay for it. You want me to be an ambassador? I've got, I've got, you want me, you know, it was a coach that was coaching me. It's like, hmm, that's a bit weird. So that didn't work. And I know of other people that have said, you know, oh, the, the brand aren't very happy because I haven't been doing well or then you're not the right match you know it's a bit like dating isn't it like yeah. you're gonna you're gonna have to kiss mm. some frogs before you find some princes or princesses yeah, or definitely. unicorns i think it's just about it's about being really clear up front what both you expect out of the partnership um i've made that mistake before because of not really knowing what i was meant to be delivering um and then you don't know how much to deliver and whether you're under or over or and and it becomes a bit confusing whereas if you up front and it doesn't have to be a formal contract um i think they help um but definitely having a little email chain be like look you know what what do you need and and um you know and you try and say this is my aim for the season this is where i want to be but fundamentally they will get it if you don't and if you're still posting across your other platforms and exposing them in different ways and talking about you know like a feed company doesn't just help you on show day does it it helps you on every single day of the year so talk about how they help you in the other ways instead and if it is like the mindset coaching how that's helped you through this time where you had all your goals lined up and you were about to live your dream and it all come crashing down um every brand can support on the bad days as well as the good and it's about doing the right thing and um it, talking about them in those senses instead um but fundamentally they should find out before it goes on your social media so don't want every day put the bad news up on social before they know um that is probably the key bit of advice i'd give great bit of advice there um i have i do sometimes have ambassadors that do that kind of thing and then i drop them a little message and i'm like um you okay <laughs> but it's like oh well fair enough depends how good your relationship is really doesn't yeah. it but yeah okay yeah. i have a question for you Ooh. Katie. yeah here we go it's a long one that's not right i set up a blog for my confidence journey and limited it to a year as i feel people don't really want to read about my so day 735 as i tacked up for too long so advice on limited time blogs. This is amazing. I didn't know there was a limited no, time blog. Would you post weekly, daily, or every ride? I totally agree with re being scared to big yourself up. We might want some clarification on that one, Sue, in a moment. But um, what do you think um, about how to keep it fresh? I think probably what she means is how do I keep it fresh? If I've, you know, I was planning on doing it for a year, but now she's a year in, I know that much. Um, what do I what do I keep writing that's not still? So I'm doing the same thing, especially with lockdown. We were a little bit limited on what we were up to, weren't we? How do we keep it fresh? Oh, good question. Um, I think the same way you keep your training fresh. Um, we as riders are always out doing new things. Um but and there must have been something that's changed in that year so what has changed for you what's different now um if it doesn't sit right with you to be posting about it anymore then then don't if you really feel comfortable about writing about it and you still want to and you still feel that there's a following um then do but if you're struggling to come up with content daily and you feel like every ride's a bit sort of the same then perhaps limit it uh, do maybe a weekly summary on how it's gone 
Um, and if you've had a breakthrough ride, then post about that one. Like you don't have to be like, oh, I'm going to post, you know, the, the algorithms love consistency, but fundamentally like it is your own personal thing. So if you've had a ride that's been incredible and you want to talk about it, talk about it then. then. Um, it's not a problem. I think just be, you know, if you're finding yourself getting bored of what you're writing about, then that probably is it. So just go and have a think about what you like reading, have a look at some other posts, have a look at some different blogs and see what they're doing and, and just get maybe some new ideas that way, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, certainly the way that I think, oh, what am I going to post? What content is it going to be? You know, yeah. that kind of thing. Um, as a business, it's useful to have a calendar, content calendar, isn't it? And, you know, yeah. schedule stuff. But at the same time, sometimes you want the off-the-cuff things as well, don't you? You want to, you know, post about something relevant. And um, over the years, I've certainly found that if I go and learn something new or I watch something new or I'm learning about another area, there's always some way of linking it into what I'm thinking of doing, yeah. um, you know, talking about what you're up to what you've been and learned what you've seen what someone else you could sometimes talk about what someone else was talking about that's interesting you know like no I don't mean like book reviews but you know what I mean like when you used to do a book review you review someone else's review or something um things like that certainly helps doesn't it so just kind of you know and I know certainly for you so there's all sorts of stuff going on in your life I think people would probably find that quite interesting to know about your life in a little way as well just a little bit that's not just your pony as well sometimes you know that's why the dog appears on my stuff yeah. now I think he's cute. Yep. So do other people, <laughs> which is nice. Dogs <laughs> and cats and pets go a long way. Sorry? Dogs and cats and pets go a long way. They do. And coffee. So what do we need to be doing with coffee just to finish off then if we're going to be putting it in our... So do I just need to be, you know, sat there with a... I think they, they come up with really great engagement questions. It's ah. you know, one like tea or coffee and it always goes mad. Or like pancake day, lemon or maple syrup. So they're completely like irrelevant, but they're quite good at getting engaged. So is that what we call clickbait then really yeah, fine, the yeah. stuff that's that's not really i mean clickbait doesn't have to be a bad thing does it it just means people to click and engage and it's like what people can do yeah yeah i did one this morning actually i just kind of randomly sat there thinking about a ride i did on sunday and how beautiful it was and i just kind of put on my page what's your favorite thing to do where do you where do you love to ride you know because the stubble fields are on the way i love a good stubble field you know, gallop, yeah. but that's what we were doing mostly on sunday they weren't quite stubble but they were going to be soon you can see they're about to be harvested these massive yeah. fields and I thought, oh, I'm going to find out where people like to ride. And do you know what? They put the most beautiful pictures up. And it's lovely. It's really engaging. And it's yeah. nice because I didn't realise I had so many followers in New Zealand until there were these stunning photos of New Zealand put up. I was oh, like, wow. oh, look at that. That's nice to know. So you get to know about your audience as well, don't you? Yeah. I mean, you should know that from your insights, Jenny. But... Yes, that's right. My <laughs> insights that I follow religiously, don't I? Yes. <laughs> so, hey, it's all good. <laughs> I get other people to do for me because <laughs> you know and that's the other thing as well isn't it that actually um if you really don't think you're massively good at this or you want some help with it you can actually get someone else to do your social for you can't you so tell us just really quickly I know I keep saying to finish but we will finish on this one if you want to get someone else to do your socials for you what would you think about how would you go about it what's a good way of doing it um I would definitely get to know that person so you need to know like you know if you're in a question business and I mean, it might work to have a completely non equestrian person do it for you, but have they got similar interests? Can they write in a tone of voice that is similar to you or your brand and how you want it out there? Um, do they get our weird language that we yeah. use? Yeah. Can they pick up the technical stuff that they need, you need them to? Um, how have they done with other social media platforms? Like have they been growing those? Um, what, is there any reviews to have a look at? See what other people have said about what they've done um i think as a rider personally you're better off doing your own um but if you want to do it better then perhaps you get some help and coaching to do it you know how to make it easier and, and such like um but i think you know there is a lot to be said for outsourcing it if you need to focus on what you do best and what you do best in social media then get someone else to do it for you and I know you do get riders that say to you, do you know what, I'm, I'm busy teaching, I'm busy coaching, I'm busy riding, I'm busy doing that side of things, running a yard, whatever it is. You know, I want this social media presence you're talking about. I want to have great brands on board. I want the support and everything. But I literally just don't have time to be sat on my phone. Like the moment I have time to be sat on my phone is just about I'm about to fall asleep or as I get up in the morning, that's it. So I know you do take that on for people if they want it, don't you? Yeah, I run like a WhatsApp group with them in their yard. So I just pass them and remind them to send me pictures and then I'll deal with the rest and making sure it's good format, it's logoed, has it got the right caption to it. Um, it is almost like 
reminding them to, to do it because a lot of time it just falls away so it's a, it's almost like a little bit of a management service like hey can I have some content this week um send me whatever you've been up to or if I know I need to put specific sponsorship posts up or well, like make sure that you go and get some images of that brand or using that product um and that works quite well doing it that way as well so yeah um it's very variable it depends what you what you want to achieve really Cool. Okay. So as always, that we always do, if someone wants to get in touch with you or find out more, they're interested in, because there's so many different services. So you, you've got the, um, I'll sit and do yours for you yep. if you really, really want me to. Yep. Reminder management service. Then you've got the, I'll coach you through exactly what it is you need to be doing, give you the templates and everything you need to be doing it. Then I know you've got the, I will do your content planner and everything for you. You can put it up or do whatever you want yeah. to option. And then there's also the, I'll just kind of tell you what it is that you need to be doing. Off you go, do it on your own completely independently. So there's lots of different options there, aren't there? Yeah. Everything from the do it yourself to the done for you option and yeah. the do it with you, which is the middle yeah. one. How do people get hold of you if they're interested in any of this or they want to know more? Um, probably Facebook and Instagram are easier. So just Riviera PR Limited on both. Uh, or you can check out my website, which is www.rivieraprlimited.com. Super. Thank you so much, Katie. That's been absolutely brilliant. Oh, you're um, and did that thing ever come back in the end? I think it might have done somewhere along the line. Uh, no, it didn't. Oh, yeah, no, I think it did, yeah. Oh, it did. There you go. See? Ta da! Just trust. It'll bring it back. <laughs> cool. Thank you so, so much. Um, if anyone wants to get hold of you, they can. Yeah. And no doubt we'll have you back on another point and something to talk about something else because it's always relevant, it's always changed, there's always something new. Yeah. It's a massive topic, isn't it? So yeah. thank you. Cool. Right. Well, take care and we shall see you soon. Thank you for having me. Bye.